Welcome, everybody. So it's the last part of the WordCamp, and I'm Flori, I'll be your MC today. So um, it's a pleasure to announce our next speaker. Our next speaker is going to tell you more about generative AI for images. And of course, AI is a hot topic, so I'm really, really curious what she's going to learn us today. She is a learned photographer and also builds websites. So give it up for <laughs> Anina Ecker. Hi, um, as she told you, my name is Anina. I'm a professional photographer and I transitioned to websites design in about three years ago. And at the moment I work for PR24 in Switzerland. Um, first of all, I'm gonna show you two pictures and I want you to guess which one is AI generated. And I'm just giving you a quick second and then I'm gonna continue without telling you. So. First of all, when you talk about AI, I think there are two things we need to think about. And one of these would be the ethics of the whole thing. So I think that um, it can be a problem if we want, for example, as I showed you, um, try to generate a historical image um, that if, we repro if it re reproduces uh, our current values, it may not always be true to the events that happened. So I think it's really important that we learn how to use prompts the correct way, that we learn how to use the right prompts and that we always cross-reference if the things always are the right way. So also what I think is important to um, look at if, if AI ever that's a question I ask myself always, if AI ever can be objective and if it ever can be truly a unique thing because we always need to have material that was learned to the AI tool and that is creates it from. So how do we handle or how do I handle um, AI images? Um, I think at the moment it's re pretty, pretty important to um, be responsible when you use it. Always look out for the things I said before that we don't um, reproduce um, inequalities, um, that, we, um, that we look out that the things we create don't um, have an unethical aspect to it. And for me, it also would be important that in the future we have some kind of regulations how we um, use AI or what is allowed to use AI for. Yeah. So what I'm on about is, or what the whole thing I wanted to tell you about is the value of the whole thing. So I'm a photographer and for me, um, AI always is going to be so much further away and I'm always going to tell you the real image is the better thing to do. But that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about stock images versus AI images because I think that's where I see the future of AI because for me as a photographer and as a web designer, there's so many websites I see and there are so many Images, I know exactly where they're from. So what I would like to do, or what I try to do, is to create an AI image that is maybe a little bit more what I want to use or what I want to show the people. And for, sorry, and that's, what I would like you to do for the next time you try to use a stock image because I know at the moment not every AI tool is going to um, reproduce exactly what you want. But I think if we try to um, make them as good as possible, it can be an opportunity to uh, yeah, use AI images a little bit more. And the reason I uh, showed you open words is because I have another wish I would like to um, have in the future. At the moment, AI tools have the opportunity. You can take an image, you can upload it, and you can create a 
similar image to it. And what I would like to do is to use, or what my wish would be is to use the stock images we already have and maybe change them a little bit with AI so they are more like what we would like to use, what our clients would like to use and um, to make them more unique, that we don't have sites that are the same overall. Yeah, so that's my point <laughs> that I wanted to bring across today. And I think it's important um, that we try to learn how to use prompt the correct way or that we at least try to learn how to use it or give it a chance to use it because I know many photographers that are so against it because they think it takes away their job. But I think if we as photographers or yeah, learn how to use AI or learn how to do AI images, we can add that to our portfolio or we can yeah, use it as well and it doesn't take away our whole job, yeah. So, um, to get back to my two images, um, for this one, maybe you guessed it, they are both generated with AI, but they use the exact same prompts. So I used two different tools and I gave it the least amount of exact details I wanted and that was uh, New York, 80, 1830, and that's what came out of it. So you see on the, for you it's the left side, um, that's a completely wrong, uh, a completely wrong picture for this time. But I tried it so many times and it didn't work. Um, on the right side it's much more like it would be, um, but it also isn't exactly the same, but it did it pretty much better. But how you can um, try to make it a little bit better is even, it, as I said, use more exact prompts and describe exactly what you want. So, yeah, that's <laughs> the thing I wanted to tell you. <laughs> and I hope I it wasn't too short. And I have for you, um, a real image of 1830 that showed you, and as you see there are carriages and people wear a little bit different things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I was so short, no? I was pretty <laughs> Thank you so much, Anina. <laughs> wow, that was a very insightful session. So here's your speaker gift. Thank and you. please give her another round of applause.